this looks like it. Hang on! Mrs. Laker? Yes. It's Tommy, my other son, my youngest. He was on his way to the shop with Pete and uh, some other kids, but they got back without him and they don't know where he went. Are you Peter? Are you sure you don't know where your brother is? Did you find him? No, I've been all the way there. Will you get someone to look for him? Oh yeah, of course. We just need to take a few details first. Should we go inside? Uh, well, don't worry. I'll stay here and keep a lookout. Leave Peter with me and you go with them. No sign, Marion. No. They've been hanging around here most of the morning. Tommy and Pete and the, the other kids out there. Then, um, about... Two. It must have been two. They said they wanted to go to the shop. It's the news agents on the main road. It's where they always go. And I said they could, but only if they all went together. And that's where they went, yeah? Yeah, I've been down there. The man who runs it says he saw them, but he doesn't remember Tommy. I suppose they were all just kids to him. So what happened then? When did you first notice that Tommy was missing? Uh, when they got back. Uh, I didn't see him, and when I asked Pete where he was, he said he'd come home. So Tommy had come home before the other kids? Well, that's what Pete said, but he didn't. Pete and the others got here first. That's why I went out to look for him. Gary, why don't you have a word of him and see what they have to say? Yeah, good idea. What about looking for him? Can we all go out and see? Well, don't worry. We will. We've got half the time. They're just around the corner. They don't even know they've been missed. Have you got a recent photograph of him? This one's three months ago. And the other's a bit older. Right, listen. It's very important that I know where you last saw Tommy so that we know where to look. Do you understand? Was he with you all the way to the shops? Do you have a fight? He tripped. But Tommy did? He fell over. And was he hurt? I don't know. All units from 340, attention requested to a MISPA, five years old, I see one blonde hair, wearing a sleeveless denim jacket, red t-shirts and jeans. His name's Tommy Laker, he's been missing since approximately 2pm from 67 Gladstone Gardens. All received, babe, where are you now? Yeah, well, at the address now, we're just about to go out and take a look. Received. According to the boys, Tommy fell over. Maybe even hurt himself before he got to the shops. Maybe. They didn't stop to see. Kids, what was this? Near the end of Sutton Road? Right, let's go out and take a look. Do you reckon a five-year-old could find his way home on his own from here? Oh, it's only three streets away. Shouldn't take more than five minutes. I'll tell you what, look, you walk back to the news agent, see if you've followed them on. I'll take a turn in the car, see what I can see. Right. I'm sorry I'm late. Last minute phone call held me up. You know how it is. Yes, of course, yes. Marion. No problem. Nice to see you again. And you too, sir. Mr Hicks not with you, then? No, I'm afraid not. He sends his apologies. I know he had a special interest in your street gangs initiatives, but unfortunately he had to go to a meeting at the yard. Hope she'd understand. Yes, of course. Excuse me, mate. You got a minute? Yeah, what's up? Yeah, I'm looking for a little boy lost from home in the last hour. He's five years old, blonde hair. You seen any kids passing by like that? No, don't think so. Mind you, I was in there till ten minutes ago. You can't see much from in there. Hold on. Oi, Jimmy! Jimmy! You seen any kids come past here? When? Sometime in the last hour. He, uh, three foot tall, denim jacket. He was wearing a red T-shirt as well. Could have been crying. Crying? Yeah, there was a kid. Yeah, when did you go for that circuit breaker? About two. 
be about 20 minutes after that then because I stopped for a fag. Was that him? I don't know. Did have a denim jacket on, like you said. Blonde too, yeah. I mean, it could have been him. He was over there by those cars. So what was he doing? Just walking along? No, that's why I noticed him. There was a bloke with him. They looked like they was together. And the bloke was bending down beside him. Looked like he was crying. The kid, I mean. And then what happened? Well, I don't know. I mean, I saw him, but I wasn't really watching him, you know. They went off that way, towards those cars. What, away from you? Yeah. Anything else? No, I... Oh, just wait there a second. Yeah. 358 from 340 receiving. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, anything at the shop, Gary? No, no one saw him. Right, come and meet us at Luther Gardens. I've got a possible sighting. I think what really made the difference is that we went in there and talked to them without any of this politically correct nonsense. You know, just plain talking. If you don't sort it, we will. Yes, well, plain speaking always was your strong point, Derek. Yes. I had thought Mr. Hicks would hear about this. I know. But in this case, he thought it would be more useful if I kept myself abreast. What do you mean, in this case? Oh, I realise this is a few days before you expected to hear, but Mr. Hicks asked me to pass on the results of your superintendent's board. I didn't get it. No, I'm afraid not. <laughs> would you know why? I think the board was concerned about what it saw as your lack of political awareness. There's a lot of good things said about you, Derek, but they mostly concern your practical skills, your effectiveness with the nuts and bolts of station operations, rather than the glad handing that goes with being a superintendent. So I'm good enough to keep this place running, but uh, not smooth enough to have the full rank to go with it. That's not quite the interpretation I put upon it. <laughs> That's what it means, though, isn't it? So when are they going to put in a proper superintendent? I think it'll be fairly soon. I bet it's a fast-track kid in his 30s. They'll expect me to go around clearing up after him. Actually, no. Mr. Hicks saw fit to approach me. They're absolutely sure he's not just out there somewhere playing. Oh, we're still looking, but I don't like this business about the man with him. It's my worst fear, but if it is an abduction, I'd rather we were quick off the mark. It'll be dark soon. OK, I'll go down there and see what the score is. We might need a bit of help if it gets as far as a door-to-door, -door, a bit thin up here. OK, let me know and I'll see what I can do. All right. John, Susie, grab your coats. Well, it really takes the biscuit. In fact, I think it's a bloody cheek. I'm sorry, but I do. Oh, come on, Derek. Would it really be so bad a return to the way things used to be? Well, you're going to have to excuse me again because things wouldn't be the way they used to be, would they? I don't know about you, but I've got used to my chair and everything that goes with it. I mean, what sort of signals is he going to put out in the station if I just step aside? It's certainly going to do nothing for my credibility as a senior officer, is it? You're being too hard on yourself, Derek. There's no doubt that people here respect your abilities, both now and as a Chief Inspector Ops. Yes, come in. Excuse me, um, Mr Brownlow, your office just called. Uh, they asked me to tell you the meeting with Mr Hicks's group is now at five. Oh, right. Thanks, Marion. Right. Oh, Marion. Yeah? Could you give them a call back and tell them that I've gone out with Mr Conway to look at one of his community initiatives? Yes, sir. There's no need for you to miss your meeting on my account. No? I know you've got a watering hole nearby. How about buying me a drink? How far down that side did you go? Number 30. But in most cases, no one was at home. What about the people that were home? No, no nothing. Matt. Dave, what have we got? Well, it's only the workman so far, but he's definitely sure that the kid he saw was Tommy. And he's definitely sure that he was with a man. They could have been heading towards a car. And they didn't see him get in? No. But this is a one-hour parking zone. Go on. Well, that means the traffic wardens come down here, take numbers and give out tickets. If they were here at the right time, they'd have a list of all the parked cars. Lovely. Nice one, Matt. Susie, can you take that? Get the index numbers of everyone who's here between 12 and 2.30 and then pull their names and addresses from the PNC. Right, Gov. What about the house to house? No, nothing. Sir? Gary, you got something? Uh, yes, sir. A uh, lady at number 52 and Mrs. Wilson made a positive identification of Tommy from the picture. It's a nice looking kid. It's our over there. Yes, sir. Hello, Mr. Wilson. 
I'm Detective Inspector Deacon. This is Detective Sergeant Bolton. I understand you saw something this afternoon. You mean the little boy? This little boy? Yes, that's him. Can you tell me what he was doing when you saw him? Well, yes, he was crying. I suppose that's really what I noticed. And the man with him was squatting down, sort of wiping the tears away. And where were you when you saw this? Uh, just there, by my front door. It was about ten past two. They weren't more than thirty yards away, over there. Can you describe the man? I suppose he was about forty, medium height, light brown hair, and he had a sort of tweed jacket on it and jeans. Right. Then what happened? Well, the man sort of guided the little boy to the car. Oh, I noticed that because it had one of those alarm things, you know, that make a noise when you point the key at it. And he opened the back door when the little boy got in. The boy got in himself, did he? Wasn't carried or lifted? It. Oh, no, no, by himself. I mean, if he'd been pushed or something, I, I might have thought... But he wasn't. Did you have to notice the make of the car, the index number? No, no, I'm sorry. It was a sort of beige colour, but... That's right, Mr Wilson, you've been a great help. If I can leave you with PC McCann, he'll take a statement from you. Gary. An hour and a half, there's plenty of places they could be by now. Better get Alan and Jim back from the Obo. We're going to need them down here. We'll see who Inspector Munro can give us. Well, at least now we know it's not a wild goose chase. Yep. Well, it's a pity. Can't you find that? I mean, how many are there? That's our top priority, Mr Laker. But there are 35 vehicles that we're checking. Also, there's always the chance that the car that Tommy got into isn't on our list. What if it isn't? How can you find him then? Well, what we're also doing at the moment is taking statements from everyone who was in the area at the time, if they saw anything suspicious, descriptions and so forth. Believe me, we are doing all that we can do as quickly as we can. Well, can't we do something? Come out and look with you? Really, it's much better if you stay here, then we know where to get in touch with you when we get some news. I just wish I could rewind it. Like a video. Stop them from going off. No, I can't. I just keep thinking it's not real. Excuse me. Anything? No. The DIO just called. None of the car numbers we got crossed match with any known sex offender. That's too much to hope for, isn't it? OK, we'll get back to the station and organise things from there. Right. Cheers. Cheers. Never been here before? Oh, I think I'd remember. What was the real reason they turned me down for superintendent? Truth? Yeah. <sighs> because you don't fit, Derek. You never did. Now, like, come on, you said you wanted to know. The truth is that no one at area sees you as a political animal. I mean, that report you gave me today on street gangs was good. But nobody believes your heart is in it. You don't believe in poncy community meetings or politically correct agendas. You're just a good, honest copper. And that's not what they want? No, I'm afraid not. Not anymore. They want faces that fit. People who believe in the new ways. It's not you, Derek. And if you think about it, you'll know I'm right. Police here! Anyone in? Oh, well, his car's on the list. I'll check it out anyway. Reg, can you hold that for us a minute? Take a look. 
Yeah, Oscar from 363 receiving. Yeah, go ahead, Steve. Can you give us a description of the shoe that Tommy Laker was wearing, Mike? Yeah, they were white trainers with purple and white laces. You got something? What do you reckon? Could be, yeah. Can you tell D.I. Deakin we're at 63 Hegan Road, home of Pete Renshaw? Tell him we think we found the car. Well, I had my time in the spotlight because A.C. Hicks needed an ally. Now that's coming to an end, I shall probably last, what, another six months at area before they pension me off. This way I can stay in the job another year or two at least. And that's what you want, is it? Yes. Well, it must be very nice to be so sure. With me, I seem to have the habit of uh, taking the wrong track. Moving to community liaison and back, then acting super. None of it seemed to work out very well, did it? I don't know. Nobody could accuse us of being alike, but perhaps you've had your time in the spotlight as well. Perhaps you should think about going back to what you do best. Yeah? How? <laughs> Forget the transfer. Stay with me, right out the store. Be a copper again. Okay, Susie, get it off to the parents quick as you can. Right, good. Are we going in? No, we'll wait till we get a positive ID. I don't want this cocked up because some defence brief says we didn't have a right to search. He could be in there. I know that, but we wait. Get hold of Jim and Alan, off checking cars, and we'll need an enforcer. Steve, Reg. I want you to check with the neighbours, find out what you can about this boat Renshaw. What's he like, where he might be, what he does for a living. Sure. Jane, do you recognise this trainer? Come on, Jane. Come on, sit down. One of the neighbours says Renshaw's an electrician. He's self-employed and lives alone. He's also got a van he uses for his work, a white Nissan with his name on it. OK, get on the CAD and get them to circulate a description. Bolton. It's Susie. I'm with the family. Right, I'll hand you over to the DI. Sir, Susie. Susie. Sir, Tommy's mother's identified the shoe. All right, thanks. OK, we'll go in. Careful what you touch, we could be talking about the scene of crime. Reg, you and Steve round the back just in case. Thanks. Mr. Renshaw! Police! What do you think? I don't know. Feels right. Go! Can you come up here? There's nothing in the bedroom, but this is locked. So I did the honours. Yeah, go ahead. This isn't what I think it is. Gov. 
Must be over a hundred videos here. And leave them. Leave everything. What about Renshaw? If he's taking his work van, he'll probably be back this evening. Get all the marked cars away from the front of the house. I don't want him spooked. When he comes back, I want him to drive up thinking everything's normal and then I want him nicked, okay? So when do you start? Back at the station, I mean. Oh, I should think within the next couple of weeks. I really would like to find you there as well. Devil you know. Perhaps. That applies to both of us, though, doesn't it? It's a cold world out there without friends, Derek. Yes, I've noticed. So? I suppose I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Good. Well, it's good to see you again, Derek. You too, Charles. Jim, get in behind him. Get in behind him. All units are Go, go, go. Oh, oh. Hey, shut up! Hey! What's going on? Hey, mate, I'll get you anywhere, mate! He's not in here, Carl. Peter Stephen Renshaw? Yeah, what's going on? I'm Detective Inspector Deakin from Sunhill. Is this your house? Yeah, well, what are you doing here? We're investigating the possible abduction of a child, Tommy Laker. Do you know? No, I don't know any children. Doesn't look like that from your attic. My attic? You can't go in there. Where's Tommy? I don't know any Tommy. No. Keep him here. Do you think these loops are the right size to fit a kid's wrists? Where's Tommy? I've already told you. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm arresting you for possession of pornographic material involving children. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you fail to mention when questioned something that you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Stephen, take me inside. Steady! Get hold of forensics and soccer. We'll need everything we can get hold of to put pressure on him. Do you think the kid's still alive? That's what we've got to find out before it's too late. 